So calculus and polar coordinates is probably best explained in calculus 3. Um, I'll do some explaining here, but I, I do think there's uh, just better machinery in calculus 3 to properly explain this. But um, So I'm just going to present it as kind of a... And, and you know, in, in, in the residential course, I would take some time to explain this, but I... Yeah, well, anyway. Sorry, I'll be lazy here. Um, so to calculate this area, if it has an inner radius of f1 and an outer radius of f2, so this is my f1, um, that's my f2, right? r equals to f2 theta is this one. Oops. Right. And uh, r equals to f1 of theta. that one. All right. So my inner radius, my outer radius, and also, you know, we've got kind of nicely defined theta 1 and uh, a theta 2, like so. All right. Um, then we can calculate the area of such a region by taking one half the integral from theta 1 to theta 2 of r out squared minus r n squared d theta. Um, now, in contrast, I can actually uh, do a little bit better job explaining the arc length in polar coordinates formula, so let me do that now. So, allegedly, if we have a polar graph, r equals to f of theta, then the arc length is such a thing. It's given by integrating the square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta over the range of theta. The derivation of that's pretty simple. Really, we're just looking at a curve which is parameterized by theta. So we have x is equal to f of theta cosine theta, y is equal to f of theta sine theta. We differentiate by the product rule, we get this, and we get that. you got to square that and add it to the square of that to calculate the arc length. right? And when we do that squaring, what happens is we get a cross term of f d f d theta sine theta cosine theta times minus 2 from this one. And we get an f f um, f f d f d theta sine theta cosine theta times 2 from this term. So the minus 2 of this and the plus 2 of that cancel, and we're just left with the uh, the squaring terms, like the uh, dft theta times cosine squared, the dft theta times sine squared theta. Um, both go together here. Uh, I'll do some color coding here. So this term and this term lead to that term, and this term squared and that term squared lead to that term squared. And again, the cross terms cancel out as I described. And so, lo and behold, ds is just df d theta. Man, I got all kinds of typos in here. df d theta squared plus f squared d theta. And then integrate that, and we get the arc length formula. So that's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Nice, nice formula there. Um, for example, if you wanted to calculate the arc length of this spiral, r equals theta squared, say from 0 to 4 pi. Um, oh, here, I'll, I'll even give you a picture of it. Why not? Why not? Let me, let me foolishly attempt a picture. So we start out at 0, and then by the time we get to pi squared, we're, pi, we're, we're out to like 9. 2 pi, we're out to like, what's 2 pi squared? Like 30. I'm making that too, I'm still making that too small. I don't know, it's, it's bigger, and then, so, that's probably still not the, not the, not quite right, but it's something like that, it, it, it's, uh, you know, this would be, this would be the 2 pi mark, and that would be the 4 pi mark, um, something like that. And, um, but the arc length of that thing, we can calculate with the um, polar coordinate arc length thing, which is r squared plus dr d theta squared integrated over d theta. And I do, the, I do the math, and lo and behold, 8 pi times the square root of 5. Not too bad. Now, usually, if you just try these arc length formulas in the wild, you'll get something that you can't actually integrate, but... That one actually worked out pretty nice. I should mention you can also mix and match concepts. We could look at a, um, you know, a, a parameterization of a polar curve. I could do something like r equals t squared and theta equals e to the t, 
and uh, say find the slope of the tangent line at t equals log pi. So that means, of course, x is r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta to find the Cartesian parameterizations corresponding to this polar parameterization. Um, I get these, t squared cosine e to the t, t squared sine e to the t. So my dy dx works out to this by the usual song and dance. And then some really neat stuff happens since t is log pi, e to the t is e to the log pi, which is just pi. So sine of e to the t is sine pi is zero, and cosine e to the t is cosine pi is minus one. Therefore, at um, t log t equals to the natural log of pi, we can calculate the dy dx is actually two over log pi times pi because the cosine pi's cancel, and of course these signs were zero, so they didn't appear. And uh, there you have it. So the um, we have um, a slope of that at the point minus log pi squared comma zero. So that's kind of neat. All right, and then um, then here's actually just to find the area bounded by something interesting. So here I look at r equals to two sine two theta, and r equals to two cosine theta. Now two cos r equals to two cosine theta is a circle. Um, we looked at that one a bit ago here. So it's circle centered at one zero radius one, and r equals to two sine two theta is one of those four petals in the in the flower for sine. And so in between those in the first quadrant we have this region right here. So the thing about that is we need to figure out the star point because if you look at that, you can see that, and I have a bigger picture down here for it, you can see there's really two stories going on, right? There's above and below the dotted line, right? So it's a different story above and below. Like above the dotted line, we have inner radius 0 and outer radius r1, right? We have this r1 is 2 cosine theta but because the circle, the 2 cosine theta, is providing the, uh, the edge of the region, right? On the other hand, down here, we have the petal of 2 sine 2 theta providing the outer radius. Again, the inner radius for both is 0. Um, to find the point of intersection, we set the, uh, the two formulas equal. I use a trig identity to convert the um, sine, uh, 2 sine theta to, excuse me, sine 2 theta to 2 sine cosine, uh, and then since cosine, and I'm putting theta 1 for the intersection point, uh, I cancel the cosine theta 1s times 2s since, since I know that they're not 0 at that point of intersection, right? And um, so that gives me 2 sine of theta 1 equals to 1. In other words, sine of theta 1 is a half. Of course, that's a standard uh, known angle, so I know that's pi over 6 without even picking a calculator up. And then off to the races. You need the, this is the, gives, gives me the area of the upper half and um, excuse me, the lower half. This gives me the area of the upper half above and below that, that red dotted line, right? So um, I'll just foolishly uh, clutter my picture with, oh, I don't want to. I'm, I'm going to leave it. You, you figure out what these means. I think you can figure it out, the, this part of it. Uh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing this part below theta 1 from 0 to pi over 6 gives me um, r2 which is the 2 sine theta is my outer radius squared whereas from pi over 6 all the way over to pi over 2 um, we have 2 cosine theta is the outer radius so we've got to do those integrals and end up getting um, this is the answer so the number is not as much uh, not as important as a setup here. Um, anyway, so I, I hope that gets us started. And uh, I think next on my stack of things to show you is an old quiz where I do some of these things. So, thanks guys.